Hello and welcome to Career Talk. Um, this is our series on LinkedIn where we are excited to talk to people that are working in the contact centre industry, have done for a long time. Um, I'm sure we'll be talking to people that maybe are relatively new too, but it's really a, an opportunity to find out how people are developing their careers uh, in the industry. And I am delighted that today we have one of uh, the UK National Contact Centre Awards head judges um, and a, a good friend of the CCMA, Stephen Lee. Good morning, Stephen Lee. Morning, Lee. Hi, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, um, let's go straight into this because you work at Lego and I mean, an exciting brand. I want to find out more about, about that, what you do. And obviously, I'm going to ask you about how did you get there um, and your career journey along the way. So first of all, what are you doing now? What's your role? And, and yeah, what does a day look like for you? Sure. So yeah, I work at the Lego Group um, and I'm Director of Operations for our Consumer and Shopper Engagement Team. Um, I'm based in the UK in Slough, but I've got responsibility for uh, our location in Berlin that we've recently opened as well. And all in all, we've got around 350 people in the EMEA operation. Um, and you know, my team are responsible for engaging with our fans right across, uh, right across Europe. So it's a, a super exciting, exciting place to be. Um, I've also got a, a group of people in, in the US who support our community engagement uh, efforts as well. So that's all the interactions that we have with our fans on our social channels or on our review sites or app stores. Um, so yeah, we, we're definitely the heart of our uh, engagement uh, with our fans uh, here at the Lego Group. I mean, Lego must be just such an exciting place to work. I'm sure that there are people watching that are uh, Lego fans, and and if they're not, then their kids probably are. Um, so really exciting place to, to be, and, and I want to hear a, a little bit more around what that actually means as an employee. But for you, um, in your role as Director of Ops, what does that mean? What, what are you responsible for? I think... Uh... Many people who work in an operations type role will will relate to this that you you can really go from being in a really strategic place uh, in, in one meeting or in one day and very very hands on in the next day. So you know I think someone once called that uh, helicopter management to me. But uh, you know within a day I could be talking in a meeting or in a workshop about how we're going to support a new product that's going to come to market next year. Um, or I could be talking with our facilities team about how we're going to create the best workplace experience. Or I could be diving into a real operational situation that's happening that is happening here and now. So it can be so, so varied in, in terms of the things that um, I get involved in. Uh, and also I take the lead on um, our digital transformation. So like many uh, companies at the moment, there's a huge uh, investment in our uh, technology um, and we've called that Project Phoenix so I'm taking a really active role in that project which is going to see some really big changes to not just our tech but also ways of working that will allow us to become you know even more customer centric than we are today um, and really continue to bring the the voice of the customer voice of the shopper to to all those conversations that matter across the company so yeah very, very exciting very varied Interesting. And I mean, that's, uh, I, I could talk to you all day about, well, what does that mean? What exactly are you doing? How are you managing that change? Is there a change in culture? Um, and, and I can ask you all about that. But I want to find out a little bit more around um, you, um, a little and, and a little less around Lego and a little bit more about you. So how long have you been at Lego? Because I remember when um, I came to see you at Lego and, and you gave me your business card, which was a little, um, a li little Lego you how cool is that um <laughs> and but you also shared that um that that you will you can you get bricks for how long you've been there and things you achieve yeah actually um so my my bricks for how long i've been here is is saying six right now but yesterday i celebrate my seventh uh, lego anniversary so uh yeah, seven years I've been at the Lego Group, and we also get bricks to to illustrate the different uh, projects and things that we've been involved in as well. So we get those uh, to help remember the the legacy, I guess, that we're we're creating. Um, but yeah, I've been here for seven years just now. 
so you weren't always um, at Lego. Where where did you start? Did you start out in contact centres or when you left school? What, what did you do? Where did you go? I think I knew you were going to ask a question on, on these lines. And when I kind of went back rack in my brain uh, to where it all began, um, it began in 1997, actually, when I left school. Um, and my first job was working at Thomas Cook, uh, the travel agent that uh, uh, is no more, I don't think. But uh, I started as a sales consultant and I was just 16 then. Um, so I realized probably when I was around 14 that I didn't want to follow a traditional expected route, if you like, of going to sixth form and going to university. So I was um, I was really keen to to work. And I'd already all, always had an interest in, in travel and exploring new places. So Thomas Cook felt like it was a, a good place to go um, go and start. Um, and yeah, I was I was there um, for 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 a good four or five years, and I was fortunate very early on to have um, a really great leader. And I think she saw something in me um, early on, and, and she really helped coach and develop my leadership skills very early in my career. Um, and actually, within a couple of years of being there, so um, still at the at the bright age of about. Uh, 18 i was actually assistant manager um and uh I, I re right then i knew that i really enjoyed leading people i enjoyed creating kind of visions and stories and taking people on that journey with me so yeah that's where it all began back in 1997. wow so um thomas cook so you were on a high street um talking to people all the time um and uh, and and learning about yourself, learning about your leadership styles. Where did you go from there? Because that must have been um, quite a hard um, place to leave, I would imagine, at that time. It was. And, you know, by, by the age of, uh, well, my early 20s, I'd travelled to lots of different countries. I'd experienced some lo lovely hotels and, and um, I, I was very fortunate at, at that. But travel changed quite significantly after 9-11. Um, and, and things just didn't quite feel the, the same. Um, and so I decided to, to make a switch um, and a, quite, a, quite a dramatic switch really because I went to work for a small uh, company in Scarborough in North Yorkshire, which is near where I'm from originally, um, called Pinderset. Um, and they, they are, uh, or they were, um, essentially an outsourcer provider for the Yellow Pages. Um, and that's really where I became involved in leading kind of larger and more operational teams. Um, and the teams that, that I was responsible for at the beginning were um, designing advertising for the Yellow Pages, um, which was really, uh, really cool. Um, and the business was, was growing. Um, and uh, I was again working with some great people, um, built up a really um, a really nice internal kind of peer support network um, and you know through through those experiences I was um, exposed to lots of different opportunities whether it was process improvement or leading teams or diving into some analysis or you know being involved in more of the um, strategic thinking um, within the operational area so yeah, I, I, I got got exposed to and had lots of opportunities to, to try different things, um, but always with the, the, the kind of operational leadership part being the being the core of it. Um, Why do you think you had the opportunities to try different things? Because I've um, interviewed a few people now who have um, in senior contact centre roles, and that seems to be becoming a bit of a theme. Um, that they, that um, that you've had that chance to try different functions, which has then kind of led to one. I guess you you know what you want to do, but ultimately led you to the contact centre. Yeah, I think you've got to be. I mean, I'm a curious person. I ask lots of questions. I like to talk to people and, and find out what's going on. Um, and I, I guess I'm also, you know, brave enough to to share with people what my hopes are and my desires are. So I think, you know, looking back to kind of uh, 2009, 2010 um, period at, at the at Pinder, you know, it, it was very, uh, there was a, 
a really good network of people. We were talking about what we wanted to do. We were being active. And we also have some really great leaders who wanted to, you know, bring in people lower down in the organization to, to share what was going on. I remember once being invited by the head of operations to go to a meeting. There was three of us and we were presenting some of the work that we've been doing on process improvements. And, you know, at that point, really, really kind of, you know, very, very nervous st stood in front of a room of all the operations leaders. But, you know, being given those, giving, you know, it requires, I guess, both you as an individual needing to uh, put your put yourself in a kind of uncomfortable place and maybe go through those periods of nervousness and uh, also good leaders who want to, um, you know, help people uh, progress their progress their career and build out the skills. And you strike me as someone that likes to do that for your teams as well, that I, you learned from that. I hope so, yes. Um, you know, I, 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 I really do uh, enjoy developing my team and I like to give them the opportunities to, to get, you know, whether it's involved in, in a different project, to get build some new skills, get exposure to different people, different teams in the organisation. So, yeah. Absolutely, I think it's about connecting people and helping people understand where they need to go and who they need to go and talk to, and you know, opening doors for people. And then it's up to them whether they walk through that door. Yeah, and and clearly you did. So after Pinder, what what where did you go next? Because there's there's we've got a time gap between there and Lego. We, yeah, well, I mean, just on the on the Pinder um, route for, for a while in, to, in 2010 uh, that's what brought me down to the to the south uh, so sort of down down to reading um because uh, a small group of us were were asked to help establish a, a brand new team with new capabilities around uh, designing websites so the yellow pages was transition if you like from a paper book to a digital organization and um, that's really where I started to get, uh, I, it really was an experience of a lifetime where we were building up a brand new organization within the organization, uh, creating lots of new roles. And the, the goal was to create a, a department, an operation that was capable of building 50,000 websites a year. Um, and, and that was, that was it was a, almost like a brand new job because even though I was in the same organization, the, the things that were going on, uh, engaging with uh, outsourcing in India and in Manila, building contact center teams, both inbound and outbound. Um, it, it was a, a huge learning curve. And at the, at, you know, at the time, it, it felt like complete and utter chaos at times. But you know, looking back, I, I'm really you know, proud of what um, me and a, and, and, a, and a wider group of people achieved in, in kind of making that happen. And that's really interesting. So. Um... When you look back at that time, how would you have done things differently? What do you know now, just specifically on that, what do you know now that you think, God, I wish I'd done that differently? Yeah, good question. I think the main, in, in, that, in that period, the, the main thing actually I would do differently is manage the expectations of more senior people better. Um, you know, learning how to say um, no or um, being, you know, being more assertive around understanding what exactly the priorities are um, and what is important and what is not. So um, I think that would be the thing that I would do. But, you know, hindsight's a, a wonderful thing. Well, hindsight and, um, and, and experience going through um, learning experiences, getting older um, and having different priorities, I guess, also um, helps to help you think differently. But it is interesting, that whole question, what would you tell your old self? Um, in a situation no that's that's really fascinating so so once you've done that and, and your role there you were responsible you were the contact center manager at that point or um, head of ops senior operations manager responsible for um, various different teams along the way but uh, yeah. essentially a mixture of inbound outbound contact centers web designers um, but yeah that so that was a four-year kind of period that was with the same organization but felt felt very different and but I, it, it felt like then the right time to to leave um you know where do you go from where do you go from that um yeah. I, I started to look for other opportunities um and i went into the telco uh industry so i went to work for hutchison three um over in maidenhead 
and um, I took on a role of co what was called contact center efficiency manager, um, and that was working with the uh, outsourced teams that were are based in India. Um, you know, several thousand people across a couple of locations, and it was really focused on trying to improve efficiency and customer experience um, of the contact center on a, hu a huge, huge scale. Um, but I wasn't there long. I was only there eight months, um, and um, that w that was also quite a strange feeling for me. That after spending you know a decent chunk of time at Thomas Cook, a decent chunk of time at, at, at Pinder Yellow Pages, to get to, into an organisation and quite quickly think, hmm, not quite sure whether I want to hang around here. Great company, by the way, and uh, you know I, I'm a big three fan fantastic culture but it just didn't feel like it was somewhere that I wanted to settle um, and um, you know there was a, a role that I saw on LinkedIn for you know the Lego group uh, senior operations manager at the time uh, and I was like okay do I go for that you know do after only being in an organization for so long and you know I guess there's also a sense of loyalty and that you build towards an organization you don't want to let them down but uh, you know, do I go for that or not? And uh, I decided to go for it. And uh, I was, you know, fortunate and got the, the job here at the Lego Group. And um, I left after eight months. So that I mean, there are so many people. I've been there where you spend actually quite a short time at a, at a company. Again, great company, but it just didn't feel right. Um, and there'll be so many people in their career that will have will recognise that. But there'll be others that maybe have just taken on a new role and they might be thinking, this doesn't feel right, but I can't leave yet. I can't leave yet because I've got to demonstrate that actually I, I can stay somewhere. And, that, and, and certainly what we've been hearing is there was a lot more jumping, especially at, a, um, at, a, a, um, at the more junior levels within the industry. Is that a bad thing? Or actually, is it character building to be able to recognize where somewhere isn't working? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I've got um, diff different thoughts on this. I think if you're jumping from one place to the next to the next on a very frequent basis, you know, do you give yourself enough time to really, um, you know, deliver on, on kind of longer term objectives? Um, do you really get the chance to build those kind of strong relationships up with people um, and really understand the, the business that you're working in? Um, so I guess that that's, um, but I think on a, you know, if you get, if you're in an organization, it doesn't feel right for whatever reason. And, and um, then, you know, I think you should just make that, make that move and be very honest and transparent when you're talking in the next interview about what those reasons were. Um, and sometimes you can't necessarily um, articulate what those reasons are. It might just not quite feel right, you know, but for whatever for whatever reason. For, for me, the what didn't feel quite right was that I didn't like um, working in a situation where everything was outsourced. I preferred the more close proximity to the people who were doing the role. And that was the bit that didn't feel quite right to me. Um, it's something that I'd um, not realized that I had such a, an affinity toward. So, um, yeah. Interesting. And now you're at Lego, and um, it sounds like you've had, again, you've had lots of opportunities. Um, have those opportunities been presented to you, um, or have they been there and you've gone looking for them? Um, I'm very fortunate working for the, a company that's growing, um, and, and you know we, we continue to grow year on year. Um, the, the the contact center, uh, our consumer and shopper engagement team, continues to take on more and more responsibility, get involved in more and more activities. Um, so those opportunities were there, um, and and you know they, they need to be they need to be taken. And you know as I mentioned earlier. I'm, I'm curious. I, uh, you know, in the most part, brave, uh, kind of putting myself forward and taking on additional uh, tasks and responsibilities. And um, I think my role has grown quite organically over the over a period of time. 
um, as a result of, 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 of um, you know, getting myself stuck into new uh, initiatives and, and to, you know, identifying opportunities for improvement and, and running with them. Take it, yeah, taking responsibility for actually there's a change there that needs to happen and, and I'm going to make that happen. Yeah. And and actually, um, and that doesn't surprise me, That and, and you've touched on throughout um, while we've been talking some of the things that are important to you. Um, what's important to you from a cultural perspective? Now, Lego is um, renowned, great place to work. I mean, the customer experience, I've had a customer experience with Lego and it was fantastic. Um, is that in the business as well is that culture of fun um and um uh, and, and doing things right in in the business what's important to you from a culture perspective i'm glad you said that you had a good experience that mate <laughs> <laughs> yeah happy um yeah i i, I think people make, make the culture um i i've been fortunate to work with lots of people um who want to work together, um, who who um, have got a shared interest in achieving good things. Um, and I think that's important that, that people are working together as one team with a shared objective, a shared goal, um, and um, that people are supporting each other. I think it's great when you work with people in a culture um, nurtures uh, developing and celebrating strength rather than too much you know obsessing on developing weaknesses you know we've all got them i think it's super important to know what they are um, but you know sometimes we've got to accept that it, it's not going to be something i can uh, you know necessarily be absolutely uh, great at but i'm really great at this so put two people you know together and together they're going to make a you know a superpower so i think um I think that's really important that, that, that we nurture strength um, and, and perhaps sometimes dial down a little bit on trying to plug those weaknesses. Um, I think for me also, I've been fortunate to work for two family-based businesses, the company Pindaset that I talked to you about and Lego, of course, is a family-based businesses. And I think what I've seen from both of those organizations is a, a genuine caring nature coming through from that family ownership um, and as you mentioned at the, at the Lego group you know uh, our values and spirit genuinely come through in everything that we do whether that's the way that we lead our people the way that we recruit the way that we design our products the way that we design our marketing campaigns the way that we train and train our team members so um, I, I think um, it's one thing to have, uh, you know, a website with these uh, values and aspirational quotes, and the other thing is, how do you live and breathe them every day? Um, and I think that's got to be um, through our actions that yeah. we that we present ourselves. Uh, and I especially like with um, with with the the businesses that I've I've worked uh, for um, the the long term decisions that are made for the health of the business in the longer term you know from the lego group point of view you know how do we create a business that's there for generations and generations and generations to continue to inspire the and develop the builders of tomorrow um and i really appreciate that that we you know we've got a, a plan uh, already talking about what our um, aims are for 2032 for example you know so that's um something I particularly like uh, and brings the culture to life. And it's interesting, um, you talked about uh, their Lego in um, 2032. Earlier you talked about um, the fact that you're you, you're quite open about expressing your um, where you want to be, where you want to go, your desires, your hopes. Um, what Where does that sit for you right now? What are your future desires, your future hopes? Where do you, where, where, where are you going? What's your direction of travel? I sound like I've got it all together, don't I? But actually, yeah, that, that's the, yeah that, 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 it, that I, I, I'm really enjoying myself right now in the job that I'm doing, and um, I, I get a, a lot of uh, fulfillment from it uh, in, in very various ways, whether it's the, the project work around the tech transformation or whether it's um, getting involved in, in some of our 
um, you know, daily, actual in the moment challenges that we might want to to look at addressing. I get loads of fulfillment from it. So I'm really happy where I am. And I think that's another in, important point that, you know, be true to yourself. If you know, if you don't know what the next step is that you want to make, or you don't maybe want to make the next step, that's also okay. I'm really happy to continue kind of growing myself in the role that I'm in. And maybe in two years' time, if you talk to me about it, then I might go, actually, yeah, I, I want my boss's job, or I want to work in the marketing team or whatever. But right now, I'm really content with um, doing the doing the best I can in the role that I'm in and, and continuing to kind of grow it and, and, and push myself and the, and the boundaries of that role. And do you push yourself therefore out of work as well? I mean, you, you mentioned before we uh, went live that you've been down at the gym, not necessarily today, but um, that you've been pushing yourself at the gym. Um, but and, and therefore, um, do you have time outside of work? Because there's, there's a lot of people in a senior role or there is a perception that there's a lot of people in a senior role who, well, they just work all the time. Um, and do you work all the time or actually do you have a life outside of work too? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm again content in the work-life balance that I, I strike. You know, I, I definitely find time for the gym. Um, I could find time for it every day, whether I choose to use that time every day. <laughs> um, but no, I think it's super important to, to get the right work-life balance. And um, of course, we've all got busy jobs, but you know, things will be there tomorrow. Um, and I think sometimes we've got to be quite ruthless about our prioritization for prioritization. And I think we've got to, um, you know, what we sh what sometimes say no to things or, or reset expectations. Um, that's one thing I find quite hard. Is I like to be involved in everything, and uh, I, I I want to be in the, in in all those meetings, in all of those workshops. So I find that a difficult thing to practice myself, but. Uh, yeah, I, I I definitely um, I definitely find find the time um, for for it, and and there are different methods for doing that, aren't there? You know, I, I have no no issue of you know keeping an eye on my emails on a weekend. It doesn't it doesn't it, that doesn't impact me, but other people it will do, and they might need some more separation. Interesting. So go on. What's the best piece of advice that someone has ever given you in your career? Um. I think it is that what I just mentioned that not everything is urgent. It will be there tomorrow. Um, I think the um, you know this fast-paced world that we live in, the fact that we've got access to you know our emails, whether it's on our watches, on our on, on our mobile devices, um, you know, somehow build this um, impression that we've got to respond to our emails within minutes and tick off that to-do list at the end of each day accept all those meetings, um, but not everything is urgent, and m uh, most things will be there tomorrow. Um, you know, get clarification on deadlines. Um, they're not things I'm, uh, they are definitely development areas of mine, by the way, but uh, that is something that um, definitely rings in my head uh, um, as a con throughout. Now, you've already had a successful career, and who knows where you'll end up in the, over the next 30 years. Um, but what do you think is the key to a successful career? Um, be proud of who you are. Um, celebrate your own strengths. Um, like I mentioned earlier, be aware of what your weaknesses are. So I think awareness of yourself is really important, but don't drown yourself in those topics. Um, and ultimately, you're, you are your own best advocate. Um, so you know, advocate yourself. Um, be proud. Be proud of who you how, who you are. Um, and I would say also um, find someone that can help kind of hold that mirror up to you once in a while as well, um, and ask you those tough questions and give you that tough love um, when it's needed, or that gentle encouragement, or that gentle nudge. Interesting. I think that's so important. Do you know what? I could talk to you all day. Um, I really could to find out a little bit more about you and your career and what you're doing at Lego. But I'm going to finish with some um, rapid fire questions. So, tea or coffee? Coffee. Oh, nice. Um, How do you take your coffee? Black. 
Fancy. So um, <laughs> what have you got? Petrol, diesel, hybrid, or all electric? Petrol. Have you? I have. I have. I have had an electric car recently, but uh, I have to travel up to, to Yorkshire frequently to go and see family. And uh, the range the range is not there yet. I get range anxiety. So when the electric car's got a good 500 mile range on it, then I, I'll definitely go for it. But for now, it's a petrol, I'm afraid. Oh, my goodness. So um, would you rather travel to the past or to the future? Future. Interesting. interesting would you rather fly or have super strength fly oh interesting so you're flying to the future um so i, I have to ask you these last two lego architecture or lego star wars it's got to be lego architecture yes my son loves lego architecture um and lego land or disneyland it has to be lego land i'm there on sunday <laughs> which people think I'm mad actually because it's Easter Easter Sunday, isn't it? So, but, it yeah. Is, yes, it will be busy. Do you do you go to Legoland quite a lot in your own well, personal time as well as? I'm sure. I've that. been a, I've been a few times uh, in in a kind of uh, personal capacity um, without kids, um, but I get more joy. I, I've got a three year old nephew, and uh, he he's coming down with my brother and sister in law this weekend, so. I'm actually really looking forward to that because I think you know see, seeing his face and the the kind of joy he's going to get from from Legoland is probably going to uh, be the the best the best thing. So oh, you must be the best uncle in the world working at Lego and <laughs> and, and having me, been into your offices and seen just the amount of Lego because of course you have to have it on site to be able to help customers. Absolutely everywhere. It's fantastic. Stephen, thank you so, so much for joining me today. It has been absolutely fascinating hearing about your career journey, your pathway, and um, hey, all the best for the future. Sounds like you're in a really good, happy place. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.